Hello, this is Mr. Miller. Welcome to video 3G. This video is about the quotient rule. How to take the derivative of a quotient of functions. But first, I want to go back and review what we were doing last time, the product rule. The derivative of a product of functions. And I have the product rule written up here. So when you have the derivative of a product of two functions f and g, the derivative is the first function f times the derivative of the second plus the second function times the derivative of the first. So when we have uh, an equation like this, y equals quantity x squared plus one times sine of x, the x squared plus one part would be f, the sine of x part would be g. So the product rule says take f, that's x squared plus one, times g prime, the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x, plus it says g, that'd be sine of x times the derivative of f, which would be the derivative of x squared plus one, which is two x. Okay, so this was f times g prime plus uh, this was g times f prime. Okay, now next step is simplifying. That's usually where a lot of work is, but this one's not bad. This is x squared plus one times cosine x, plus normally we write the polynomial in front. If it's a we'll multiply by sine of x, so it would be two x sine of x. There's the derivative y prime. Okay, super. Let's find the derivative of this one. This is f and this is g. Now it has square root of x, so I'm gonna rewrite that. So this is not taking the derivative. This is just writing this in an equivalent form that we know how to deal with. So I haven't done any derivative yet. So I'm gonna consider that as f, and this is g. Okay, the rule says take f, that'd be x to the one half, times g prime, cosine x, plus g of x, that's sine of x, right there, plus the derivative of f, which is x to the one half. So it's one half times x to the minus one half using the power rule. Okay, so now we're gonna rewrite it. X to the one half is square root of x. So I'm gonna put it back as a radical times cosine of x plus sine of x times one half. Well, if x to the positive one half is square root of x, x to the minus one half is one over square root of x. So here we see that sine of x is gonna end up in the numerator and two and square root of x is gonna end up in the denominator. So this is square root of x cosine of x plus sine of x over two square root of x. That's the derivative. Okay, I have one more product rule example I'd like to do. So here we go, these are two polynomials. They're, this is gonna take a little bit more uh, algebra work, but we can do it. This function is f, and this function is g. All right, so here we go. y prime would equal f, so I just copy the function f there, times g prime. The derivative of this would be 2x plus 7. All right, then plus g, which is x squared plus 7x plus 2 times the derivative of f. The derivative of this is 3x squared plus zero, which is just 3x squared. All right, that's the calculus part. Now we have to multiply it out. So x cubed times 2x would be 2x to the fourth. Then we have plus 7x cubed. Then minus one times 2x is minus 2x. We'll have a minus seven. Then over here, we have to distribute the 3x squared. So it's plus three x to the fourth plus 27, sorry, 21 x uh, to the third plus six x squared. Then we combine like terms. These two are x to the fourth terms. So that gives me five x to the fourth. Um, seven x cubed plus 21 x cubed is 28 x cubed. Then we have a six x squared, 
What's left? A minus 2x and a minus 7. Wow. What a deal. But that's cool. And we can do it. That's the product rule. And that's the derivative. All right. Now, it's time to up our game a little bit. This is the quotient rule for when we have one function divided by another. Uh, in this rule, f of x represents the numerator. And g of x represents the denominator. And, like the product rule, we simply have to substitute into this to find the derivative. So here we go. y prime equals g of x, that's x to the fourth, times f prime of x. Derivative of sine of x is cosine of x, minus f of x, that's sine of x, times g prime of x. The derivative of g of x is 4x to the third, and this is all divided by g of x squared. And then it's algebra time. All right, so this would equal x to the fourth cosine x minus 4x cubed sine of x. Really all I did is put the 4x cubed in front, divided by, here, x to the fourth squared is x to the eighth. And this is pretty good, but we can cancel some factors of x. In fact, everything can be divided by x to the third. So let's do that. So I'm going to write this as x to the third times x cosine x minus 4 sine of x. So I just factored out an x cubed divided by x to the eighth. So we can cancel. x to the third is a factor. So if we can cancel that, we take three x's out of the denominator, that'll leave us with five. And our final answer is x cosine x minus four sine of x all over x to the fifth. Okay, wow. The first part was the calculus. After that, all kind of algebra. Uh, laws of exponents, factoring something out, simplifying a fraction. All right, here we go. Let's try it again. So uh, this is f up here, and this is g. So let me apply the rule. Y prime, the derivative of f divided by g is going to be g of x, 3x plus 1, times f prime. The derivative of x minus 5 is just 1, minus f of x, times g prime of x. The derivative of g is 3, all over g of x squared. And we just finished the calculus. So let's distribute and we get 3x plus 1 uh, minus x times 3 is minus 3x minus uh, minus 5 times 3 would be plus 15 divided by 3x plus 1 squared we can combine some things those cancel and we get 16 over 3x plus 1 squared all right take some algebra muscle but we got it all right, I want to do two more examples. Here's another one like the last one, kind of. So uh, here is f, here is g. Okay, so y prime is going to be g of x. So that's 2x plus 9 times f prime of x. This one's a little bit more complicated than the last one. So the derivative of the numerator would be 2 times 6 is 12 x to the first, or just 12x. The derivative of minus 3x is minus 3, minus f times g prime of x. 6x squared minus 3x times the derivative of g would just be 2. All divided by 2x plus 9 squared. All right. It's algebra fest. Let's see if we can do this. 2x times 12x would be 24x squared minus 6x. Uh, 9 times 12 is 108. So plus 108x minus 27. This is a minus a 2 and a 6x squared is minus 12x squared. A minus a minus 3x and a 2 is plus 6x. That entire mess 
is over 2x plus 9 squared. All right, big finish. Uh, 24x squared minus 12x squared is 12x squared. Uh, minus 6x plus 6x cancel, we have plus 108x. And then minus 27, all divided by 2x plus 9 squared. We're done. Okay, that brings us to our very last example. Uh, we want to find the equation of the tangent line to the graph at the given point. So we're always kind of doing this kind of problem. If you notice, this is classic calculus. And so now we have a little bit more complicated function. It's going to require the quotient rule. And we want to find the, the equation of the tangent line right there. All right, in order to do that, we need the derivative because the derivative tells me the slope of the line. So we have f of x equals 27 over x squared plus 9. Now, I want to stop and make a little comment because it's easy to get confused here. We're using the name f in a couple different ways. So the way that the book has the quotient rule stated is a good way, but it involves f and g. We got to keep straight that when we look at the rule, f refers to the numerator of the function and g refers to the denominator when we're using the rule, no matter what the function is named here. So when we see f prime and f in here, it's kind of confusing. It's talking about the numerator and the denominator. Okay, so f prime of x, the derivative of the whole thing would be, well, g of x times f prime. You can think of that as the denominator times the derivative of the numerator. So it would be x squared plus 9, that's the denominator, times the derivative of the numerator, which we usually call f. That is 0, minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator. Uh, the derivative of x squared plus 9 is 2x all over the denominator squared. So I applied the same rule I did as in the previous two examples. Like I said, we got to be careful. Uh, in the rule, f and g refer to the numerator and the denominator. Okay, so we get the derivative of our whole function here is, well, that times 0 is 0. You just get minus 54x divided by x squared plus 9, and the slope of the tangent line would be the derivative at negative 3, since we want the tangent line at negative 3. This is a formula for the derivative everywhere, and we want it at this point. Okay, when we substitute negative 3 in, negative 54 times negative 3 is 162. Negative 3 squared is 9, plus 9 is 18, this should have been squared, and so that'd be 18 squared, and if you do that in your calculator, you get one half. All right, we're going to find use that slope and this point right here. So point slope form will give us y minus y1 equals m x minus x1, and that's the equation of the tangent line there. You could graph the function and this equation on your calculator, and you'd see the tangent line. All right, that was a lot of math. It is time for you. And uh, please work out uh, these three problems, copy these functions, and use the quotient rule to find their derivatives. Uh, please show all your work. All right, see you in class.